What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about why I didn't even download or play the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 beta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Die line, die line with the boom pal. Every week now switch to a new staff. Two twelves in the back just blew out. Now, if you guys are longtime fans of my channel, you know that I've had a love-hate relationship with Call of Duty over the past few years. Uh, and with Black Ops 4, this has it's at an all-time high, honestly. Um, when they announced Black Ops 4, I was very, very pessimistic. I was, for multiple reasons. For one, I was like, you know, this is the first time that they're ever breaking their trilogy rule. You know, they had never gone beyond a trilogy until now. You know, they had Modern Warfare 1, 2, 3, then they had Ghost, and then they had Black Ops 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I thought, okay, they'll do something new this year, but instead they opted to do another Black Ops game. Why? Because it is the fan favorite franchise. They know that if it's Black Ops, if it says Black Ops on the case, there's a higher chance that they'll sell more copies, which, fine. Then we find out there's no campaign, so I'm like, okay, they must really be cash grabbing because this actually has nothing to do with the other Black Ops games, clearly, because there's not a story. So if there's no story, there's no way it's actually tied into it. The only reason it's called Black Ops 3 is, yeah, they have some reoccurring heroes, but really, there's no plot that ties it in with the previous game. So it's not a Black Ops game, it's just, what are we going to call it? Call it Black Ops 4 because everybody likes the Black Ops games. So then there's that and then we find out they put a battle royale mode in so it's like all right now they're really they are trying every trick of the trade pulling every magic bunny out of the hat doing whatever they can to sell as many copies as as, as possible Let's say okay well what's the most popular thing in gaming right now fortnite and PUBG. all right what is battle royale all right that's what people like let's do that so it's like it's just this super shallow cash grab is is the immediate feeling that i got out of it and then we find out about the black ops pass and you know all that and you know it just felt really really dirty right out of the gate like wow they're really they they have no shame in pushing a game like black ops 4 you know everything are surrounding it whatever so i've been incredibly pessimistic from the get-go thinking you know call of duty has failed six years in a row now with Black Ops 3 being a slight exception, um, and you know, they've under delivered, over promised, under deliver every single year, and I always get excited for it, and then. <sighs> and then it ends up being trash, and we all hate it by March. And that date is moving sooner and sooner. You know, with every passing Call of Duty, the amount of time it takes for me to hate it gets shorter and shorter. Uh, Call of Duty World War II was fun when it dropped because it was new, boots on the ground, it's what we wanted, the setting we wanted, everything, um, but we got half a game. You guys remember me talking about this. We got half the amount of maps, half the amount of guns that we would get in older Call of Duty. So really, you know, of course I'm going to lose interest come like January 1st. So honestly, the games of the past couple of years have decreased in quality drastically. Um, and so, you know, I think there's a couple of reasons for this. And, you know, I will say that Black Ops 3 is my favorite of the, of the recent Call of Duties. Um, I played it eight days, 18 hours. So I played it enough to get Dark Matter Camel and everything. But most of that playtime came in the first I would say five months of the game being out and then they started patching all of my favorite things and they nerfed all my favorite guns and perks and everything and then I just didn't even like Black Ops 3 six seven months into the game I think like, it was a totally just a game that I played because I had a YouTube channel for it so with that small exception the past couple of Call of Duties have been atrocious I mean World War 2 I can't believe they actually uh, they actually went in and put perks in World War 2 or something I heard that they did that a while ago now I couldn't believe they did it because I didn't think anybody still played World War 2 at that point uh, you know I thought everybody quit playing World War 2 and like March was the when the last fan stopped playing like I seriously you know because it's such a bad game and then Infinite Warfare, obviously, nobody even considers that a Call of Duty game. It was absolute garbage. Um, and then we had Black Ops 3, and then, you know, Advanced Warfare was a terrible game. No, that's really all I can say about it. But they did have a couple of cool maps, but it was a completely broken EXO movement. Uh, and then, you know, I really enjoyed Competitive that year, honestly. But there was nothing about Advanced Warfare that was very good. The killstreaks were trash. The, you know, you could, it was literally pay to win. Some of the guns and the supply drops were way better than other guns that would almost guarantee you a win in the gunfight against a non-legendary version of that gun. But regardless, the point stands that we've had shit Call of Duty for the past couple of years. Everybody knows that. And, you know, that compounded with the fact that I was incredibly pessimistic for all the reasons I already mentioned before about Black Ops 4. It got me to thinking, okay, what, how did we get here, right? And one of the things that I thought of was maybe it's these betas. Maybe these betas that they started doing in, I think, Black Ops 3 
maybe this has something to do with it right because think of it this way right if but prior to this you would have to wait till launch day to get excited about black about a new game black ops 4 for example now we're getting two weekends of playing the game before it even comes out so it kind of starts that honeymoon timer before the game even launches and because it's only available for a weekend people frantically play it they really grind these betas they play it a ton so if they play five hours a day for you know friday saturday sunday that's three days and then there's two weekends so it's six days that you play five hours a day that's 30 hours which is what's well, a day and a quarter of play time and if you compare that to my eight hours or i'm sorry eight days 18 hours of play time on black ops 3 that's like an eighth of the game it's play time before it even comes out right you know you're talking about playing 15 percent of the entire of your attention span with that game you're spending before it even launches so you know i think part of it is these betas we're playing the game we're, we're getting exposed to the game early and early and earlier and it's starting that honeymoon timer early and earlier and earlier and it's giving us a taste of the game which makes us optimistic so we buy it uh, and then we find out that it under delivers again for the fifth, sixth, seventh year in a row. And you know, it's just, it's, it's gotten so old. So that's what I'm trying. Or that's what I tried to accomplish by completely avoiding the beta. I didn't want to play the beta, uh, at all. Right. And the only reason that I even pre-ordered the game, because I wasn't going to pre-order it, um, at all. Cause there's no reason to pre-order it. It's not going to be scarce to get, it's not going to be a hard to get game. Um, you know, and the pre-order perks are always trash. So there's no point to it. It's like a shitty skin that, you know, pe Oh, you get a free skin and a limited access to an exclusive map. The map sucks. The skin sucks. It's not, in it's not enticing to me at all. But regardless, you know, I saw some footage from YouTubers who went to E3 or whatever these conventions are over the summertime, early summertime. And, you know, I saw the gameplay and I, and it, and it, you know, it reminded me a little bit of the love that I had for black ops three. And I was like, you know what? Maybe by some miracle for the freaking millionth time in a row, maybe this will be a good call of duty is what I thought. And if I order it, if I pre-order it on Amazon, uh, with my prime discount, you know, I'll get the game for cheaper. I'll get it on launch day. <clears throat> it'll, you know, maybe it'll be good. So when I got the email saying that here's, you know, hey, hey, here's the uh, beta code that you got from pre-purchasing something on Amazon, I didn't even acknowledge it because like, whatever, it doesn't even matter. I don't want to play a, the beta of a game that I'm likely not going to like shortly after its launch, you know, because that's going to give me this false sense of optimism, which I don't want. You know, I'm incredibly pessimistic about Black Ops 4 as it is. I don't want to get this little taste of it and think and mistakenly think, oh, it might be a good game. No just i'm just gonna let it drop i'm just gonna let it happen i'm gonna let black ops 4 just fall in my lap uh and i'm gonna pop it in and we're gonna play it on launch day and we're gonna see what it is now the other part of this is a much deeper problem right like obviously the problem with call of duty isn't that we're playing the game earlier every year i think it's part of the problem you know we're getting greedy and we want to play it earlier and earlier but I, I i really there's a deeper problem here and it's happened slowly year after year it's a slow change that's been happening across call of duty uh and it has to do with the maps and when i ask you know if i ask you hey what is what are your favorite call of duty maps you know people are going to list off the most iconic ones and i have a list of them right here so you might see me glancing over but we have rust obviously the meme map 1v1 me bro on rust we have nuketown which they've remastered a million times and of course it's the most iconic most memorable map in pretty much a video game history at this point there's standoff from black ops 2 which is you know that uh the map with it's the stone house right in the center if you played it you would know of course hijacked is like one of the most iconic maps ever everybody knows hijack estate and favela in world war uh, in call of duty modern warfare 2 you have shipment from call of duty modern warfare you also have wet work i think it was called in, in modern warfare um that was the nighttime boat one uh, and then you have dome from modern warfare 3 you know these are some of the most iconic maps in call of duty history and you know i will add uh the whatever that water park one was in in black ops 3 that one was like kind of cool kind of memorable very bright colors but you know it was it was good but average i'll say above average we'll give it that regardless the, the point is all of these maps are iconic and we remember them and they're our favorite maps from those games from those games respectively and besides rust and shipment they all have a similar theme and that is that they are three lane maps 
um, and you can go back and look at all the maps that I just listed they are all three lane maps except for shipment and rust and the, the problem is you know that well here's why three lane maps are the iconic maps from older call of duties because in these older call of duties we had a lot of maps that weren't that memorable um they didn't really have great flow to them and you know amongst all of these seemingly chaotic maps you've got a few maps that were pretty easy to learn right like nuketown was easy to learn you could explore the map your first time playing it you you go everywhere in the map so, you know, in a game where there's all sorts of different maps, Nuketown stands out in your head. You know, in Black Ops, the original Black Ops, Nuketown is memorable because, oh yeah, that's the small three lane map. You know, that was a blast. And the reason that we think that is because it was in a game with all sorts of different types of maps. Nuketown was the one that you figured out the soonest. It was the one that you would likely do the best on because you were able to figure out the map layout the soonest. So you could figure out the traffic patterns of the map and figure out the, you know, different spots where uh, different lines of sight, all that stuff, right? So in these games, in these older Call of Duty games, you have these th certain three lane maps that stand out amongst the rest because they were the easiest to learn, they were easiest to do best on, and that made you feel like they were the most fun because you would do the best on them. Of course, the more kills you get, the more pub stompy you are, uh, then the better you're going to do and the more fun you're going to have. And so what Call of Duty did uh, is they said, okay, let's look at all the most iconic maps that our fan base likes the most. And we're going to use that formula and we're going to create every single map just like that. And while this sounds good on paper, it's actually killing your company. Uh, and, and the problem with this is because when every single map that you put in a Call of Duty game, and you can look at the past few Call of Duties, <clears throat> pretty much every single map is a two-dimensional, three-lane, whoever shoots first wins fest. Uh, and that's really what it is. So they took their most popular formula, and they incorporated it to every map, and they think, okay, this, this, people are going to love these maps because they're just like all their favorite maps from the past that we do the same thing with these maps as all their favorite maps and the problem with doing that is that there's no variety within that one game right and like I said a three land map in black ops might be a, a great map because it stands out amongst the variety as a fun easy map to play but when every map is a three lane map in infinite warfare or call of duty world war ii then you have no variety and the game dies incredibly fast uh, like i said by january i was done with world war ii far done with world war ii and it's because there's no variety in maps and not to mention there was only like seven maps or nine maps when world war ii dropped like zero Seriously, there was half the amount of maps in World War II as there were in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 when that game dropped. And, and it's, it's you know, eight years later and you're giving us half the amount of maps and they're all the exact same formula, so none of them are fun and there's no variation. You know, when you spawn into these maps, they might look different and they're different visually and you might feel maybe they're a little bit different because, you know, oh, here there's a little window and, and, and like a tree's falling and, you know, whatever the case might be. But subconsciously, when you spawn in, you're thinking, okay, am I going to go left, down the middle, or right? That's what you think no matter what. That is the only, your options. Those are the only options. Whereas, you know, and I, I know I used estate as an example for a three land map because it is, but when you play certain, uh, when you play certain Call of Duty games from the past, like a state where if you go in the back left hand corner of the map or bottom right hand corner or whatever there was that little like power generation portion of the map where you would often find people boosting like there's parts of older call of duty maps even the three lane ones like a state where you could just go off and just do some just be where there's literally nobody you could go lay down in that back corner of the map and you would never be found nobody would ever find you you would go zero and zero all game because you just laid down in the back corner no one would see you nobody could find you you could literally sit in a bush and no one would know because the the maps had variety they had different places to go they had different elevations and different you know all sorts of foliage and different places you know and you didn't just have three lanes and a couple of polygon blocks to hide behind you know so there was all sorts of variety in the maps and when you take a three lane map and incorporate three lanes into every map of the game now you have no variety and now the game's not fun and here's a good example right it's summertime, I'm hot, right? So, ice pops. Ice pops are 
good. They cool you down. They're tasty. They're sweet, you know. Uh, and they come in packs of purple, green, orange, blue, red, and all sorts of different flavors. I have a favorite, right? If I have a blue ice pop, you know, that's my favorite flavor of ice pop. But what happens if I buy a box of just blue ice pops? It might be cool for a while because I'm always getting my favorite flavor, but if I buy it four, five, six times in a row of just cases of blue ice pops, by the end, I'm going to hate the blue ice pop. It's just going to suck. So, you know, even though I have a favorite flavor, I still sometimes maybe I want an orange ice pop or maybe I want a purple, a grape one, whatever. The variety is important. There's a reason that, you know, there's a variety of Skittles in a bag because you have your favorite, but you know, the, the, a handful of them is still good on its own. And that's the problem with these new Call of Duty games. They've removed that variety from the maps. So now it's just your favorite map over and over and over again it's your favorite formula right and now that we've done this for five years everybody hates it it's awful nobody likes these three lane maps anymore and it's because there's no variety and maybe if you put two three two or three three lane maps in a call of duty game yeah cool like those fine but incorporate five six seven eight maps that are totally different where they have their own geography and their own climate and their own you know different things to look at and explore and different corners of the map to go in and you know different power points and vantage points and, and things where people would go and fight you know the point of some of these older maps was there was a clearly advantage spot on the map and even if there weren't three lanes to, three lanes to get to it People would always get in fights there because everybody wanted the power position. Maybe there was one or two, maybe three power positions on a map, but now there's no power positions. Now it's just go down the three lanes and whoever shoots first wins. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, and they've stripped that variety right from the game. And without that variety, coupled with the fact that people are playing these games earlier and earlier with these betas, everybody hates the game earlier and earlier every year and that's why i didn't play the beta for black ops 4 and i'm hoping that they do something about this problem i am not optimistic at all but hopefully they do anyway if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you smack that thumbs up button this is actually the second time i've recorded this 20 minute video the first time my microphone glitched it said that it was on it said it was recording i was like oh cool but <clears throat> no audio so regardless i hope you enjoyed the video hit that subscribe button if you're new around here click that bell so you know when i get uh when i upload you'll get notified because my upload schedule is definitely pretty sporadic um and then comment down below telling me if you played the black ops 4 beta what you thought about it and what do you think about any of the thoughts that i have put into this video and that's been it guys so thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace